We're continuing our studies of protein function in Chapter 5. In this lesson, we want to compare the binding affinities of myoglobin and hemoglobin. First, we find that they are very similar in secondary and tertiary structure. Here we have a backbone trace ribbon diagram, the two subunits of hemoglobin in red and blue, and the structure of myoglobin in green. As you can see, almost a perfect match. Even the relative position of that heme group is identical. Not surprising, since they have a similar function. Since they have a similar structure and function, we call them homologous proteins, like proteins. It might be tempting in this case, then, to see such a similarity in this case to presume that the primary structure is also similar. Actually, they're only 18% identical. What we have to remind ourselves of is the fact that there are 20 common amino acids. We have multiple basic residues, acidic residues, hydrophobic residues, polar residues, so more than one amino acid can do the same job. We want to define, first of all, what are referred to as invariant residues. In other words, when we compare homologous proteins, that residue is always in that position. It is invariant. Usually that means it's essential for function. We also find, in a comparison, perhaps there are conservative substitutions. That is, in that position, we always find a small hydrophobic residue. It could be leucine, isoleucine, or another, but they're similar. In other positions, we might see a great variety. In other words, it pretty much doesn't matter which amino acid is in that position. It will fold up and work properly. In the sequence alignments uh, of, in a figure from your text, we have myoglobin on the top. Here's the alpha subunit of hemoglobin, and here's the beta subunit of hemoglobin. This is an amino acid sequence alignment. What we find is that the area is shy uh, shaded in yellow are those that are identical in the two subunits of hemoglobin. Those that are shaded in blue are identical in both subunits of hemoglobin and in myoglobin. This is in the human forms. The areas shaded in purple are those that are invariant residues in all myoglobins and hemoglobins in all organisms. Let's focus on those blue shaded areas. If we compare myoglobin and hemoglobin in humans, those are the only areas that are identical, a very small area. Now let's compare their binding affinities. So here's a fractional saturation curve, such as we looked at in our last video. Fractional saturation on the y-axis, remember that's a fraction, so we go from 0 to 1. The partial pressure or concentration of oxygen in TOR on our x-axis, and that's increasing from left to right. Here we have the two traces that represent the fractional saturation curves for myoglobin and hemoglobin. Myoglobin is the dotted line. We saw that in our last lesson. And remember, it's a hyperbolic curve. It rises steeply and then reaches a saturating value. In the case of hemoglobin, the solid line, we find that it's a very different kind of curve. It reaches that same maximum value when the oxygen concentration is sufficiently large, the same y max value. And yet the curve shape is very different. It's sigmoidal, S-shaped curve. What we find when we look more closely in the area circled in red here is that at low concentration, we do have a linear portion here, but a very shallow slope. And then there's a change. There's another linear portion, but a steeper slope. And then again, it reaches that same saturating value. So the shape is different. We also know that their P50, or equilibrium constants, are very different. Remember for myoglobin, it's about 2.8 torr. Since they reach the same y max value, that halfway point will be the same in terms of the fractional saturation. But in the case of hemoglobin, it's about 26 torr. In other words, at low oxygen concentration, myoglobin has 10 times the affinity for oxygen as hemoglobin. Remember, the lower the k value, the higher the affinity. And so we have to ask ourselves, since they have such different binding affinity patterns, what's the difference between them? Well, they differ in primary structure, but in secondary and tertiary structure, they're identical. So what's the only real difference? Well, the difference must be that myoglobin is a single chain, whereas hemoglobin is a tetramer. And indeed, that is the fact. 
So what we find here shaded in blue, this is the oxygen concentration, the range of concentration we see in tissues, and in kind of an orange color here, that's the concentration in the lungs. So at low oxygen concentration, hemoglobin seems a little reluctant to bind oxygen. But if the oxygen concentration is high enough, it shows the same binding pattern as myoglobin. So when we look at this binding pattern for hemoglobin, this difference in binding patterns at low concentration, this very shallow slope, and a steeper slope as we increase that concentration, that tells us that the binding is cooperative. Remember there are four subunits, each one carries a heme group, each one can bind an oxygen. So this tells us that the first oxygen binds with, with less affinity than the last. In fact, that fourth oxygen binds with 100 times the affinity as the first. And that's the difference in this binding curve. This is an example of what's called allosteric. Allos means other. In other words, the binding at one site affects the affinity of an adjacent site. And we'll see more of what this means in the next video. So in what way would this be beneficial in terms of their biological function? Well, let's consider the role of hemoglobin. Its job is to pick up oxygen in the lungs and carry it to the tissues. Well, as you can see, at high oxygen concentration, hemoglobin is going to bind that oxygen very well in the lungs. And then as it travels through the bloodstream and reaches the tissues and that oxygen concentration drops, it releases the oxygen because its binding affinity has decreased. But that is its role, to pick it up in the lungs and deliver it to the tissues. And now myoglobin takes over. That's its job. It has a really high affinity at low concentration, and so it picks up that oxygen and delivers it to the mitochondria. So you can see the difference in their structure and function relates specifically to their biological roles in the transport of oxygen. In the next lesson, our last lesson, we want to see, look more particularly at the nature of this conformational change in hemoglobin. What's going on to make a difference in the binding of the first and the fourth oxygen?